Hey everybody, welcome back to another brand new video. Today we're doing a yard sale video. This footage is from a couple weekends ago. I went to a yard sale looking for baseball cards. My brother had sent me a message and said that he was messaged through Facebook or somewhere of this yard sale that had baseball cards and sports memorabilia. So I decided to go check it out because supposedly there was a bunch of cards here and indeed there were. So we'll show you what they had first before I get over to the baseball card boxes. First, I saw these 1988 Topps folders for a dollar a piece, and I, I just loved these when I was a kid. I think I used to have the Andy Van Slyke folder and the Bobby Bonilla folder. They were awesome. This was another thing that caught my eye. 1988 Topps, a complete box for $5. Now, it said repacks on it, which kind of confused me for a little bit. I didn't know if it was like a Frankenstein box put together with different packs or what. I put it I put it aside, gave it to my daughter to carry. I was going to buy it, but it actually ended up being a, just for display purposes, all of the packs were taped with scotch tape on the back. So I did end up putting that back. Next, we have some studio oversized 8x11s. These are kind of cool. They were pretty cheap as well. Only about 25 cents a piece. A lot of Hall of Famers in there. I was thinking about buying something like that, but I was like, eh, I probably don't need that. I already have a bunch of stuff out in my garage from previous garage sales and yard sales. Next, we've got some MVP pins, which are always cool. Some Cal Ripken Jr. MVP pins. You get a pin, you get a Cal Ripken 1990 scorecard in there. Going down here, we've got some older publications as far back as 1987 or so. So I always like magazines. If I see a Beckett from like the mid to early 80s, I always, I always grab it just because I feel like that's kind of like a little piece of baseball card history. Didn't see any in there though. So that led me up to the baseball card boxes. Now these boxes have these colorful little sticky labels on here uh, or post-it notes. The blue signifies baseball. And then there was other colors like pink and white or whatever. Those were different sports. So as you know, this is a baseball card only channel. So I decided to take a look at a couple of the blue boxes. Now it did look like they were mostly from the junk wax era. So I did pick out a few boxes. We'll go through those in this video. And also, by the way, I've got an auction tomorrow night, a big consignment auction. We might pull out those boxes and take a peek inside there. Speaking of boxes, down below they had a big box of what looked like blasters, but they were all open. He was selling the empty boxes for a quarter piece. And I already have a bunch of those. Those come in handy if you're wanting to send some cards, get a little extra packaging there to put the cards in, just throw them in a, a empty blaster box. My daughters, of course, wanted some stuff. They found some Barbies that they wanted and uh, they wanted Barbies. And I think they also got like a cup and uh, there's Olivia. She looked for some stuff. She ended up getting a, I think she got a replica PNC park that uh, she was gonna give to Robbie and Tibby and have a contest. I don't think they ever had that contest yet. Over on the other side, here's a couple things that I missed. $2 box of Wheaties, $5 Andy Van Slyke bobblehead, along with uh, commemorative puck right there, and a couple other items. So I ended up spending, I think it was, I think it was $20 on baseball cards, plus the other stuff that I bought for the kiddos. There's a 30 for 30 DVD set. So all together, 20 bucks. We're gonna see if it's worth it or not. Here's some CDs, by the way. Nickelback for the Nickelback fans out there, Red Hot Chili Peppers and uh, former Ultra Boys, whatever. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at these boxes. I'll show you the four that I picked out. We'll see if we find anything good. Let's get to it. All right, everybody, back from the yard sale. We'll take a look at these four boxes. I spent 20 bucks. I hope we can maybe just get $20 worth of cards in there at the very least. That would be pretty nice. Also, we'll take a look at this, a little auction preview. Got a bunch of these boxes from Keith Newro of the Newro Mystery Packs. We'll see what he's sending. We'll be auctioning those off tomorrow night. And I'd like to remind you, hit that subscribe button if you're new here. And if you'd like to join the channel as a channel member, we're giving this away to channel members at the end of the month. Try to get the first comment in this video and any videos throughout the month of September. And uh, we will put you in the running for that card. One uh, entry per person per month. But anyway, let's take a look at what we have. Like I said, it's probably mostly going to be junk wax. So... Uh, maybe just maybe we'll get lucky and find say like a 93 select Derek Jeter or something like that man look at all those Rick Aguilera's and Norm Charlton's so whole bunch of those 
Next, we've got some 93. There's Yvonne Rodriguez. We've got a Hall of Famer. We'll take and put that one aside. Uh, Paul Mulder's a Hall of Famer. Wade Boggs is a Hall of Famer. So a couple Hall of Famers. There's good old Lenny Dykstra, a.k.a. Nails. Some of these cards, man, they definitely show their wear. Here we go. Some nice Bowman cards. These are going to be from 2013. There's a Will Myers rookie card. And we've got Evan Gaddis rookie card. I'll take that one. Shelby Miller. We'll see if there's any other notable names in there. There's a nice early prospect card of Javi Baez. We've got a Zach Wheeler rookie card. So I'm glad they're not all junk wax. Mark Reynolds from back in the day. Adrian Beltre is a surefire future Hall of Famer. Adrian Gonzalez. There's Roy Halladay, who's a Hall of Famer. Yachty Molina, first ballot Hall of Famer for sure. He and his uh, longtime mound companion or battery mate, Adam Wainwright, just set the all-time record for most starts together with uh, 325. That is absolutely crazy that they've been together that long. Oh, look at this. Imagine how much this would have been worth if uh, maybe he would have not gotten hurt. This is the Brian Taylor, and it's the gold card as well. That card was so hot back in the day. It was just everyone thought Brian Taylor was the next big thing, and it just didn't work out for him. We've got 2013 Elite. There's Colin Moran, Hunter Renfro. So we've got a couple um, active players here. Trevor Williams, Michael Lorenzen still around. These, this is when, these guys are all young guys, young prospects. A. Eugenio Suarez from way back in the day. He's having another nice season, albeit a ton of strikeouts. He's injured now, but um, not too bad for A. Eugenio Suarez this year. Uh, let's see what else we have. This is from 2013. There's a Chris Taylor back when he was with Seattle. A couple of him. There's Colin Moran once again. Former Bucca right there. I think he was actually just recently released by the Reds, or at least DFA. Now we get into 2014 tops. Would be very nice. Oh, there's only a couple of those. I was going to say, wouldn't that be nice if there was some nice rookies in there? Maybe come across a Jacob DeGrom rookie card. That would be mind-blowing. We got some more of this 2013 Elite here from the yard sale. Let's see if there's any other notable guys. There's another Chris Taylor. So what I'm doing is I'm going along as I'm taking out the notable players, and then I'm going to just use that stack to determine if I got uh, $20 of value back. If there's going to be some nice rookies in here. Maybe there's Glaber. Glaber Day. It's always, you know, he's kind of, uh, I don't know. I know he's disappointed to some collectors. His rookie cards were pretty valuable back in 2018, late 2018, 2019. He had that great season with the Yankees. Hasn't really replicated the same success, but still having a decent season. Michael Lorenzen again. Just trying to see if we're going to find anybody else in here if, among all these elite cards. And there's another Chris Taylor, Dixon Machado, Matt Duffy. There's Glaber once again, back with the Chicago Cubs. You might recall Glaber came up in the Cubs organization, was traded to the Yankees in the Aroldis Chapman deal. So I think that deal worked out pretty well. We've got Christian Guzman. Some older stuff right here. Matt Williams, speaking of home run chases. Did anyone see Aaron Judge hit number 60 last night? Crazy dog pile out there in the bleachers. There's a Francisco Cervelli rookie card. I guess we'll put that one aside. Cervelli had a nice career. He's retired now. So if you're looking for Cervelli, wondering whatever happened to him. He's actually a catching coach. I believe he's a catching coach with the Padres. And he... I guess Lord, one of my favorite coaches of all time away from the Pirates to be his right-hand man, Herbie Andrade. There's a Kurt Schilling rookie card. Okay, 1989 Donruss, Kurt Schilling rookie card, future Hall of Famer. Dave Winfield, 84 tops, Hall of Famer, and another Brian Taylor and Wade Boggs. So here we go. Now we're getting into some nice stuff. Barry Bonds, 91 tops as well. I used to love that card as a kid. There's Nelly Cruz, Chrome, Craig Kimbrell. I don't know. Craig Kimbrell for a while there was on the Hall of Fame track. I don't know if he's still going to get in or not. We'll see how long his career goes and if he can continue to be a closer. It's been a little bit of a bumpy ride here and there for him. It's Greg Jeffries, finest Ryan Sandberg, circa 97 is a cool card. 
a lot of busyness to, the, to that Circa card. Hideki Rabu, first Bowman. That would have been a hot card back in the day. Another Sandberg. Ricky Henderson, elite. We got Raul Mondesi, former Rookie of the Year. Roberto Alomar, who's a Hall of Famer. Cliff Floyd, Ryan Sandberg once again. Another Sandberg. Another, man, lots of Sandmans here. Dave Justice, who had a decent career. Got to acknowledge Dave Justice. Orioles, Mike Messina. I don't remember this card at all. This was from OPG, 94. No wonder. I feel like OPG was super, super tough to get. John Nunnally, Roberto Alomar, Jeff Bagwell, Sandberg again. Sandberg, so a nice run of Hall of Famers here with Eckersley, and then Trot Nixon breaks it up. Looking all depressed right there, sitting there wondering when will I get out of a slump that he's in. It kind of reminds me of someone looking down. John Allard, Tim Salmon, Jose Rosado. These are nice cards. These gallery cards. When were these from? 1997. By the way, Jose Rosado was my favorite player of 97 or so. I used to be a big Jose Rosado fan. I used to collect his cards. And uh, he had a, maybe a good season or two and then just kind of disappeared. Look at that Sandberg. That's a great card right there. Jumping over Craig Biggio. The Sandberg Gas Station card. Atlantic is a cool card as well. There's Matt Williams' Grand Slammer card. We got a Ricky Henderson there. So overall, this box this box alone, could we potentially have $20 worth of cards? It's, it's possible. All these Hall of Famers get a couple nice rookies. Mike Messina. There's a bunch of Ryan Sandbergs in there. I used to actually have a Ryan Sandberg PC. I used to collect his cards. I had a booklet. Not a booklet, a whole binder. This is Ricky Henderson in a Padres uniform. Ricky played for so many teams, but I always remember him as an Oakland A. Man, I feel like I need to get a box of these gallery cards and break them open. 97 gallery. They are sweet looking, like works of art sweet looking. Let's check the rest of these out. We've got Jason Kendall on the top. Looks like, are we going to have a Pirates run here? Oh, boy. Now, I don't collect Pirates cards, so some people are like, what the heck are you skipping all over your favorite team for? Just never was a, um, I, I was a Pirates fan when I was a kid, but, you know, I just do not collect uh, common Pirates cards any longer. Look at that card, Julian Tavares flipping the seeds into the mouth. If he catches all of those in his mouth, that's that's pretty impressive. I'm kind of curious to know if he, if he did. I used to love this card a lot in this series. The 94 Fleer All-Star cards, Terry Mulholland. Albert Bell, Bo Jackson, and we've got some Bowman cards there from 1996. All right, so the first box is in the books. We've got three more of these. Let's take a look at what we got in this next one from the yard sale. This one's organized by year. So 92 Pinnacle. Let's start with this one. Jared Kelnick's in there, so we got some newer ones here. I did take a peek in some of these boxes, and maybe this is what drew me to this box, seeing a couple newer players here. Nick Niedert, Zach McKinstry. So we have some newer players. And then Tim Wakefield. That's kind of a cool card. <laughs> Actually, I don't, I don't think I ever had that one as a kid. 94 Pinnacle. I like that card a lot. I was a big Tim Wakefield fan when he first came to the Pirates. He took the Pirates by storm. I think it was 90, I want to say 92. Had that just crazy good earned run adversaries don mattingly that's a nice card swing man and then looks like we've got a bunch of pirates here we've got some pinnacle cards there's frank thomas summit we've got looks like andrew jones right there and um i don't remember the aficionados i vaguely remember those some of the higher end sets i didn't really collect a lot of there's frank thomas checklist it's always kind of when i was growing up i never really had a ton of money any Anything I had, it's Yvonne Rodriguez, Team 2001. Anything I had went right back into the cards. Jeff Bagwell. So these are all going to be 92 pinnacle cards. We'll just give it a quick glance and see if there's any big ones. There's a Don Mattingly in there. Yvonne Rodriguez, once again, we'll put that aside. Mo Vaughn, former MVP. Cliff Floyd. Oh, there's Kirby Puckett shooting the uh, billiards. Uh, Kenny Lofton, who was just a great player probably deserves a little more of a look for the hall of fame but it fell off the ballot right away kenny lofton great leadoff hitter and uh still legendary in, around the cleveland area greg maddox team 2000 nolan ryan and also a lou gehrig and robin ventura card right there so it's a couple of nice cards it looks like the cards like the best cards here weren't lifted out 
These cards may have been sorted and put in here back in the 90s and kept that way ever since. There's David Cohn. I'm hoping we can maybe find like a nice Jeter prospect or something. There's Jim Tomey. We're looking at 96 score right now. Checklist there. Might find the the uh, the rookie, quote unquote, rookie of Marion Rivera who's in this. It says rookie real big at the top, but he's not clearly a rookie. Some people will get duped out at flea markets or card stores. There's a Mark McGuire that I just put aside. I like that Hideo Nomo. I'm going to put that one aside. I'll say rookie. I don't think they have a um, Mo rookie card, but really they don't. John Smoltz, a couple Hall of Famers right here. Kenny Lofton once again. John Wetland closer card. I used to really like William Van Landingham as a kid as well. I think it might have just been because his name was so darn long. Man, Andy Van Slyke. Love that one. These were the dugout collection cards. I think they were Insert parallels, John Smoltz, Andy Van Slyke, Edgar Martinez, a couple of Hall of Famers. So I'm taking out the decent cards and stacking them up. I got a nice stack so far. We'll continue on and look through the rest of these. Next, we got some 90, this 95 score from back in the day. Eddie Murray, who's a Hall of Famer. There's Albert Bell, Frank Thomas. It looks like maybe whoever put this together back then, these were some of the hot names back then. Chuck Knobloch, he was a big name. Now he's just a common. We've got some 95 Donruss. Looks like this person maybe bought one pack of 95 Donruss. Do you get anybody good? Um, Mike Messina's good. And that's probably his best card. There's Scott Erickson at the back. What else do we have? Some 96 Donruss, Mike Messina, Carlos Garcia, who was an all-star for the Pirates. Pirates are always put at the forefront here, it looks like, whenever we're going through these. So I don't know if they did every team. But we'll see. There's Fred McGriff, Brady Anderson. I do like this design a lot. This uh, 1996 Donruss design. I like it. It's The names are easy to read. Unlike um, some of the series where you just have to just kind of look at the player and identify rather than strain your eyes. Yvonne Rodriguez, a couple Hall of Famers there with Mike Mussina and Larry Walker. Got Jim Tomei, who's a Hall of Famer. Steve Traxel and Greg Maddox, who won. How many gold gloves did Greg Maddox win? Like somewhere in the teens, a crazy high amount. 98 Donruss, one pack was purchased by this collector. And you got Nettie Murray and Roberto Alomar and a Brady Anderson. Then we've got um, Chipper Jones right here. This is gonna, going to be from 98 Donruss. Hey, you have Vladimir Guerrero, quote unquote, rookie card right there. A little bit of maybe paper loss in the corner. Even back then, there was paper loss. Fresh out of the pack, I guess. 95 Don Ross. Bobby Higginson was an absolute beast back in the day. Mike Messina right there. Mike Hampton, who was a slugger for a pitcher. He signed a $100 million plus dollar contract there with the Rockies. And uh, man, he really liked hitting in Colorado. With that, that rare air that was before the days of the humidor and could hit a pop-up and it would turn into a home run. Hey, there's Andy Van Slyke. Little hot shot card. like that one a lot. I'll tell you what, I really liked I really liked 92 Triple Play. I don't know why, but it was just a cool, cheap release, and it was a fun release. It was definitely geared towards kids. And um, I was 11 years old or so when this came out, and I was a big fan of it. I remember buying packs of this. I think they're around 50 cents. Pretty, pretty affordable. All right, moving on. Next, we got a Crime Dog card right here. This is kind of cool. Look at that Ryan Sandberg with those bears in the background. Is this 94 triple play? I guess. I didn't I don't think I bought too much 94 triple play, but definitely a cool, fun little design. Mark Newfield, who was a nice name. There's a couple Hall of Famers in Biggio and Baines. Chad Curtis. Remember that name? Oh, we got a Carlos Delgado quote unquote rookie card. There's Paul Molitor. Raphael Palmero, and that'll do it there. Let's see what else we've got. Looks like there's some 91 Leaf and some 91 Stadium Club to wrap up this box. There's the Big Mac. Cal Ripken Jr. would have been stoked on that one. George Brett as well. After I went through my Ryan Sandberg phase, I switched over to Cal Ripken Jr. Probably in like, I feel like I went to Cal in like 92 or 93. Definitely a few years before the whole... Um, Lou Gehrig, consecutive game record breaking chase. There's Don Mattingly, 91 Stadium Club. That that's, was a good card back there. Everyone wanted that Phil Plantier. 
Jeff Bagwell rookie card. Okay, that's probably one of the highlights of the video so far. Lots of Hall of Famers. A couple of rookie cards here and there, but that's probably the best one. Hall of Famer Jeff Bagwell. Tom Glavin's in there as well. Uh, we got David Segui. That was there's Luis Gonzalez rookie card. David Segui was always a hard name to pronounce before you ever heard it. Sometimes I used to just butcher names, and then I'd hear it on the radio and be like, "Oh, that's how you pronounce it." And Glenn Davis is the last one right there. So again, not a bad box. It was five bucks. There's some nice cards in there. Let's continue on with uh, this one. Has some guy's address in New York on here. I'm guessing he was the original collector that owned this. Man, he really liked to tape up his cards. Got some older cards in here. I see some '86 at the four at the top here. Let's see. Oh, there's '84. So we're going way back here, getting some some older cards. Let's see what we've got here for you. See if we got Kirk Gibson. I'm going to take that one out. He's not a Hall of Famer, but he was definitely Dave Concepcion. Another great name. Dusty Baker might be a Hall of Famer. These are OPG mixed in. Ted Simmons, Tim Raines. A little bit of OPG for us. So the backs, you'll notice, look a little bit different. This is the regular toss back, and the OPG back was printed on different card stock. Another Tim Raines back to regular tops. Wouldn't that be something if we found a Don Mattingly just kind of mixed in here? Lou Whitaker, sweet Lou. Pasquale Perez. There's Mike Marshall, the batter. I remember I got a Mike Marshall autograph, and I was really mad about it. In, uh, what was that, Historic Signatures, the trivia game? And then uh, some people were, I told you who Mike Marshall was, and I got some people telling me, oh, Mike Marshall was a pitcher. Yeah, he was a pitcher, but he's also a batter. Um, at least there's a different Mike Marshall that was a batter. Don Sutton. Don Sutton, Dale Murphy. Sutton's a Hall of Famer. Lamar Hoyt had some good seasons. Bobby Cox is a Hall of Famer. Got to take that one out. George Bajorkman is a great name. It's probably not pronounced that way, but I like to think that it would be. Fergie Jenkins, Hall of Famer. Fergie Jenkins, Ron Guidry, and Don Baylor is a nice one. I'll take that and put that aside. Don Sutton once again. Burt Blylevin's on the card as well. Jim Palmer and Raleigh Fingers are on that one. Got to put that one aside. Uh, let's see what else we have in the 84s. Junior Ortiz. That is a Junior Ortiz. I think that's his rookie card, believe it or not. And you might, some of you are like, who the heck is Junior Ortiz? <laughs> Junior Ortiz, backup catcher for the Pirates back in the day. So that's a name that means something to me, but probably not anybody else. I always thought it was weird he wore double zero, or zero is his number. Dale Murphy, 84. We've got some 85s here. We'll see if we can maybe hit one of the good rookies in here, like the Mark McGuire, Kirby Puckett. Here's 86's bunch of pirates there. 86 to me was uh, kind of like a vintage release. When I started collecting, I thought 86 was like super old. I was like, wow, 1986 tops, I can't believe it. But, um, now 86 is, you know, still fun to look at. There's Kurt Gibson. Eric Davis, that's his second year card. I guess we'll take that one out. That's somewhat special. Johnny Grubb, Kirby Pocket's second year card is a nice one. Dave Stewart, Tommy Herr. Last player. Somebody passed this stat along with me. Last player to have 100 RBIs, but hit less than 10 home runs. Tommy Herr hit eight home runs and had 100 RBIs in a season. Got some Pirates cards here. 91 score Ryan Sandberg's bunch of him pro set Kevin Stevens who is probably a big drawback and they Matt Clement who's I'll put that one aside that's his first some star rookies of Jimmy Smith I don't even know who that is oh we've got hockey Wayne Gretzky I don't know anything about hockey but I know that name Manny Ramirez 92 score rookie cards nice four of them we'll put those aside some more Sandberg's Roberto Alomar somebody Really loved Sandberg Hall Mark Grace rookie card. I'm not even putting that one aside because it just makes me mad. Thinking back to the time that I pulled a redemption from Mark Grace, 88. Fleer. There's some nice ones here with this 88 Don Russ. These are some of the bigger names. We'll keep all these together. Some of them are a little off condition. Matt Clement again. Chipper Jones, 92 tops. That's a second year card. That's a nice Tim Raines little reflective card. Got a couple checklists of some Hall of Famers. Yeah, we'll get some more buckos here. 
some 1985 tops once again. We'll see if that, there's maybe maybe there's like a second level rookie, like a. Oh, that got me excited for a second. Like a John Frank or something like that, but not happening there. Let's go ahead and move on to the next box and see what we can or the next stack here. I wonder if this was this collector's favorite, like his favorite box. All right, there's a medal. I need to do a box of those as well. Nolan Ryan, got to take the Nolan out. Midre Cummings, we got some finest cards here. Looks like they're all pirates though. Jeff King, John Lieber, who had a 20 game winning season there. Won 20 games with, I think, the Cubs. Used to love Stan Belinda as a kid. He grew up at Port Matilda, a couple Tom Glavins there. So we would always kind of go right through Port Matilda or near, nearby. Whenever we'd go up to my grandma's and my, my mom would be like, hey, it's Stan Belinda's hometown. So I was felt kind of like a little connection to Stan. How many Jeff Kings are in here in Orlando Merced? Cool card right there. Orlando Merced used to be the Pirates leadoff bat batter. I once invented a game called Orlando Merced and stuff with my brother. Or just called it that because Orlando Merced was the first batter and run through the Pirates lineup and make my brother field a ball and throw it in. Andy Van Slyke would always hit the ball way over his head and he'd have to go and chase it down. Tom Glavin, rookie cards, three of those. And we get back to some Hall of Famers. Glavin, we've got a, some, there's Ryan Sandberg, Pete Shorek, who, Pete Shorek had a really good year with the Reds. I think, I want to say it was like 95. There's Tim Raines, who's a Hall of Famer. Daryl Kyle, who unfortunately passed away in his sleep in the hotel on the road. Very, very sad. Daryl Kyle definitely had a nasty, nasty curveball. One of those big old 12 to sixers. Don't know how anyone ever hit that. There's an elite Roberto Alomar, a couple Robbie Alomars, Ryan Sandberg, a chrome, uh, John Jaha. And nice mixture here. Hodgepodge, there's Ryan Braun, chrome card. Used to like that Wade Boggs. I used to, I love that Mike Schmidt card, the all time great 90. Kyle Ripken, Mark McGuire, player of the decade. So some nice ones here. All right, so we still have another box. Man, this is turning into a long video. I was like, hmm, I'll just do this yard sale video. It'll probably be like 10 minutes. But uh, I'm having kind of fun. I'm kind of having some fun going through all these. Just seeing what's in here. There's Tom Glavin, Hunter Pence. This is a real hodgepodge of stuff from just different areas. Here we have some newer stuff. Kevin Gossman. These are from 2013. And now we have some perfect game from Leaf. Let's see if any of these names are noticeable. I don't notice any of them. I don't recognize any of them. Good old Jimmy Nelson, Oscar Tavares. Another guy that passed away. He was a big time prospect. How about a Corey Seager? Welcome to the show. A little prospect card here of Sieg's. Welcome to the show from, I think that's pro debut, or Heritage Miners actually. John Smiley, Toys R Us. I miss those Toys R Us sets. And El Padrique. I need to put that one aside and do something with that El Padrique. Andy Van Slyke. Cool card there. That one goes That one goes off to the side in the PC. Let's see what else. Al Padrique, 87 rookies. I'll have to put that aside and save that for my brother. Is that uh, you might appreciate those. As a gag, Ted Power used to hate him as a kid as well. Got some newer ones here. 2001, wouldn't that be cool to find like an Ichiro? Uh, vintage rookies, Vernon Wells. Vernon Wells had a great career. Let's see if we can find anyone else noticeable or notable. Carlos Beltran is a nice one. There's the, don the big donkey there, Adam Dunn. Jason Bay, man, Jason Bay. I know some of you are cringing in New York right now. And maybe Seattle as well. Jason Bay, Paul Molitor there. Will Clark, rookie card from 87. Ryan Sandberg, Jason Bay signed a big contract with the Mets, and it really backfired. Didn't really work out. So Jason Bay was one of those players who, whose careers just kind of came abruptly to an end. And Bay was a good player with the Pirates. All-star, rookie of the year. Had a really nice run in Boston as well. T tops total. Is this 03? Oh, I think it's 04 tops total. These were a cool set. I think there's like... Some ungodly amount of cards in the set, like 900 cards or 1,000 cards, almost impossible to put together. Definitely had to buy a lot of packs. If you were a set builder, there's a Scott Rowland right there. And we'll see if we've got anything else. Mm, nope. 
nothing too crazy in there, just some commons. And our last box, Nolan Ryan, our last stack here of this box. A little word for Oral Hershiser for a little while. Zach Gallon gave him a run there. Roberto Alomar rookie card, some Nolans. All right, definitely like the run of Nolans here. Zach Gallon had, what, 44 consecutive scoreless innings? Sean Green rookies. And we've got more Hall of Famers in here. Sean Estes had some nice seasons. There's another Nolan Ryan. Robbie Alomar once again. Got Kyle Ripken. Some more Robbie. Some of these are a little off condition. Like you'll notice a little bit of um, wear on some of the cards. But overall, you know, not too bad for a $5 box. Getting a bunch of Hall of Famers with the commons mixed in. Got to take some of the commons to get the good stuff, I guess. If, uh, if it was an entire box of Hall of Famers and rookies and stuff, it wouldn't have been $5. There's a Bernie Williams 90 score rookie card. Tino Martinez, big name there for a while. Had a great career. David Wright and Lou Collier. Jose Guillen, I used to really like him. Had a crazy good arm, Jose Guillen. Could throw from his back up against the right field wall and throw a runner out at third with a just an absolute missile. Last box, what do we got in here? I'll give a quick little look. Um, 88 tops. I might skip this one and just to save a little bit of time. Uh, all right, I'll do a little bit of it and then the rest of it I'll go through off camera. Uh, there, I see some older cards here from 1981 Don Russ. 81 Don Russ. If you really want to have a laugh tonight, look, uh, type in Jabs Family 1981 Don Russ and see what comes up. I once opened a box of these and it was probably the worst box I ever opened. It was an absolute disgrace it was like the same 10 or 12 cards in every single pack all the cards were stained up it, it, it was the literally the worst possible box you could ever find now 81 don russ is an absolute disgrace in and of itself the card stock is like super thin razor thin and um you know it was their first foray into baseball card so they didn't really know what they were doing that well they worked out the kinks and they came out with a nice release in 82 and then subsequent years 84 don Ruts, just a few years later is one of the best releases of the 80s arguably some of you would say it's the best release of the 80s but 81 don Ruts, just not a uh not a very good box maybe i'm a little bit biased because i had some bad luck with it way back and i think i opened that box years ago hey look there's 80 speaking of 84 don Russ, there's man such a nice design nice clean design right there 85 don Russ was nice as well there's some 86s look i said i wasn't gonna go through these and now i just want to but i uh, got to uh gotta stick to my word here and <laughs> wrap this up because i like to try to keep my videos to 20 to 30 minutes but this one's definitely go, going to go just a tad bit over Here's the rest of these 81s. There's 82s in here as well. I think that last box is probably way better than this one. Anyway, seems like these are mostly commons. You just give it a quick cursory look here. Ah, uh, yeah, these are mostly commons. I mean, there's some nice players in there. Red Sheendon, there's a Hall of Famer. He's a coach card there. Suckliffe, Matlock. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up with, I'm gonna go and just give a quick little shout out to Burt Bly 11. Quick little shout out to Keith Nero of the Nero Mystery Packs. He's having us do a consignment for him on Thursday. So if you'd like to participate in that, all you have to do is be subscribed to the channel and have PayPal. And he sent all these boxes in. Binders. Got binders here. So pulling a page from the Justin Harris book. Binders of cards. We'll do the binders by themselves. Looks like there's a bunch of a lot of first Bowman refractors in here and so on and so forth. These would be 2021s. Um, so a lot of prospects for the prospect collectors. There's some 2020 Bowman Chrome, 2019 Bowman Chrome. And we'll go through all those and auction those off. And then he sent, um, we've got probably about seven of these boxes. They're titled Autos and Parallels, Bowman Color, Bowman Color and Slabs, Various Bowman and Stars, Various Bowman, Various Bowman. Bowman insert. So if you love Bowman, there's going to be a lot of Bowman in here. Let's just take a quick look. Looks like he put these in team bags for us here. We usually do our autographs in lots of five. It looks like he might have 10 here. So I might break these up a little bit and do five at a time in some instances. In other instances, I might do all 10. Um, and maybe some of the other packs. 
He's got like Bowman first. I might do like 20 of those at a time or something. Oh, there's a nice Matt Frazier, Sapphire. So a whole bunch of autographs um, in this box. We've got, that's a nice Yordi. We've got parallels in here as well. So I hope you'll be able to tune in and check us out um, tomorrow night on Thursday night. Curtis Mead first blue. That's a great card. Also Thursday, we'll have Throwback Thursday for you tomorrow. We rip in a box of 2017 archives looking for Zach Campbell's rookie auto, so to speak. And of course, the Aaron Judge aut autograph rookie and uh, maybe his rookie card as well. Judge may have uh, 61 by the time we go through that on Thursday night, so it's a good time to do it. Uh, Friday, we'll face off Friday. We've got three higher-end boxes for you with Immaculate Tops Chrome Jumbos, along with Museum Collections, so that'll be bla a blast. We've got Saturday Showdown coming up, so all kinds of stuff. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. And thank you very much for watching today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Wednesday. Let me know, by the way. Did I get over $20 in value? I think I did. I think I did pretty good. Those boxes were nice. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Wednesday, and I'll see you all tomorrow for Throwback Thursday and the auction. Good night, everybody.